Suddenly, the French are paying attention. After choosing between familiar faces on offer through two rounds of April's presidential voting, legislative election campaigns followed. They seem to many like a seven-week snooze fest until Sunday night. Now, with first-round ballots counted, all to play for in next Sunday's runoffs. The re-elected Emmanuel Macron's one week to convince voters to return a centrist majority to parliament. We'll break down the odds for, those, uh, set for that second round. Uh, what's the winning argument in what's now a four-way battle with an uncharacteristically united left, the far right, and a weakened but still relevant traditional uh, conservative bloc? We'll ask if the French want continuity or change with a particular eye to races where current or ex-cabinet members are under pressure, like in the eastern suburbs of Paris, where the organizer of a successful hotel cleaning staff strike leads uh, against former sports minister and Olympic swimming medalist Roxana Marassianou. Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at whether or not Macron's majority is in doubt with us. Uh, he campaigned for Emmanuel Macron back in 2017. Lex Paulson, executive director of the School of Collective Intelligence at Morocco's Mohamed VI Polytechnic University. Thanks Good to be with us. you. Uh, thanks as well from Brussels to Sophie Rouser, a policy advisor to the uh, European United uh, Left uh, bloc to which unbowed France of Jean-Luc Mélenchon uh, belongs. Thanks for joining joining us. Thank you. Also in the Belgian capital, Patricia Chanon, a municipal councillor in the northern city of Abbeville for Marine Le Pen's uh, national rally uh, party. How long is Abbeville to Brussels by car? Not, it's what, it's an hour? Three hours. Three hours. Oh, I got that wrong. All right. It's quite 300 kilometers. Oh, yeah. OK. Thanks for being Thank you with for us. Having me. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you. Annabelle Lever is uh, back with us, professor of political philosophy at uh, Sciences Po, who was there on election night as the surprises began to, uh, yeah. to unfold. Thanks for joining us again. Pleasure. The uh, France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation you have on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24Debate. So, Emmanuel Macron owns bragging rights to becoming the first French president re-elected with a sitting majority. In the past, there have been presidents re-elected, but it was always while they were in opposition. Now, it seems, comes the hard part. It's harder to say, give me a mandate, when you're no longer the new kid in town. Sinead McCausland has more. A neck and neck finish. Left-wing alliance party NUPS and presidential party Ensemble led the first round results in France's legislative elections on Sunday. Jean-Luc Mélenchon's coalition, the new ecological and social popular union, is set to challenge French president Emmanuel Macron's parliamentary majority. For the first time in the Fifth Republic, a newly elected president has failed to establish a majority in the legislative election that follows. Coming second place, Ensemble can expect between 255 and 295 seats in the Assembly. A close call as they need 289 for an outright majority. France's Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne is now calling for more support. We have a week of mobilisation ahead of us. One week to convince, one week to obtain a strong and clear majority. For far-right Marine Le Pen, the leader of the national rally will go through to the second round in her constituency in Pas-de-Calais. Coming third place, Le Pen did not align herself with either party. In the constituencies that will see a face-off between Republic on the move and NUPES in the second round, I invite you not to choose between the destroyers from above and the destroyers from below. If Macron's coalition falls short of a majority, he will be forced to find support from other parties to pass laws. Yeah, in the old days, uh, Lex Paulson, uh, this is the day when there's lots of calculating. Uh, uh, usually in the past, um, you had lots of three-way battles because you, you had, but because it's 12 and a half percent of, of the eligible voter, exactly. registered voters mm -hmm. to make it uh, to round two of legislative elections, and we'll talk more about the abstention rate later. It means there's only eight three-way races. Candidates, by the way, have until s Tuesday evening uh, to, uh, to register for the second round. Not too many expected to bow out. So really, it's about mobilizing the troops. Were you surprised, first of all, by the results? Uh 
I, I was a little bit surprised after five years of, of, um, of, a, of a political organization, which was brand new in 2017, and which nevertheless uh, was very strong on the ground. I was surprised at um, that Emmanuel Macron seemed to make the mistake a little bit of Barack Obama uh, in 2010, uh, which was to spend more of his energy as, as president on governing than on campaigning. He spent very little energy on campaigning, and that showed, frankly, in the level of organization of these campaigns. Now, in America, we are, are arguably spend far too much money and time uh, on campaigning. But you say mobilization. To mobilize voters, you need to go talk to them. And campaigns must develop mechanisms both online and in person. And, and studies still show, still show that in-person conversations are much more likely to mobilize a voter than an email or a text. And so you need all of the above. And these campaigns, frankly, didn't do that much campaigning but in the can time But can a candidate for Emmanuel Macron's party do that when the whole brand is around one man. If that, if Macron doesn't come to your constituency, can you campaign? Uh, you can if, right, you understand what moves the voters in your circonscription. Um, there are some En Marche deputies that I've gotten to know a little bit who uh, had a knack for understanding what was the story that was being told in that district, whether it's Chartres, whether it's, you know, central Paris, whether it's Bordeaux. And um, it's, bo voters are mobilized by a whole range of things. It's not only the president. The president is the strongest force, but he's not the only one. And the question is, what kind of story did the, could the deputies tell? And did they have the operation to tell it? I think some deputies that did well this time around, and En Marche will elect uh, a, a very sizable number of deputies, but the ones who will succeed are the ones who developed outside of their dependence on the Macron brand, an additional story or set of stories that could mobilize voters in different ways. Uh, Patricia Chagnon, let me ask you, uh, mayors I know are personalities in French politics. Are members of parliament known by constituents in your where you are? Do people know the name of the member of parliament? Yeah, they, they do if the member of parliament is actually active on the on the terrain. And um, uh, members of parliament go into the constituencies in France at the end of every week. They they are in part they are in session at the beginning of the week, at the end of the week they are in the they are supposed to be in their constituencies. Um, uh, all the members of parliament that the Rassemblement National uh, had elected in 2017 all uh, ended in the first round of these legislative elections with over 40 percent, which really shows that they were there and doing their job and that people uh, want to see them again because, of course, they will be re-elected. Re I think what really the problem was with this election is that, um, firstly, uh, Mr. Macron promised um, um, reforms of our electoral system. We have two tier system in France, which is very favorable to big parties. He promised to change this, but didn't do it. And the trends that we've seen over the past years in France has been a slide in, in turnout for elections, which of course is extremely bad for uh, the, the function of, uh, functioning of a democratic country. Secondly, the presidential elections um, were uh, the second round of the presidential elections was everybody against Marine Le Pen. Do not forget that. Uh, the left wing, the ultra left wing rallied and, uh, and, and, and asked to vote for, for, for Mr. Macron. So did what is that, whatever is remnant of the, of the uh, Republica, uh, Republica in, French, in France. And you can see today, I think, with the very low turnout, first of all, the dissatisfaction of the French people with the electoral system. And secondly, uh, the disapproval of, of Mr. Macron's policy. Policy. In 2017, he was a virgin, brand new candidate. Mr. Macron now has a um, uh, has a mandate to show of what he's done, and we have seen the yellow vests in the streets. We had huge manifestations against the reforms he wanted to carry out with the uh, retirement age. So I think we have show, uh, this uh, this first round has showed a tremendous rejection of Mr. Macron and of his policies. When you look at total votes, Sophie Rouser, though, uh, the centrist coalition still polling neck and neck. I know there's a big argument going on today about who got more votes in the end because there are dissident candidates. So I won't go into that. But the but the 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 centrist coalition did poll a lot of votes uh, it, 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 heading into those runoffs. What are your expectations? Yes, everything will you know, depend on the participation rate next Sunday for the second round of the election. Uh, what we have seen so far is the 
huge abstention level, and this is very frightening. On the side of Macron's members, what they need is basically uh, the right wing, the Republican, as they are called, to vote in uh, their favor. Uh, whereas for us, we need the voters to actually come to the to the to the votes on Sunday. So the abstention is, you know, the best ally of Macron. It's basically its lifeboat. Um, whereas for us, we really count on democracy. S what we have seen on this Sunday does bring us a big smile because it's historical. Uh, you need to understand maybe a lot of people who are watching right now uh, are not very familiar with the French political system. But since we had that reform placing the legislative elections right after the presidential election, there used to be this tendency of giving, you know, a sort of confidence voting for the for the president just elected a few weeks before. So what we've did we did with the left uh, is that we brought the left back in a in a situation where it was really really um, important for people to know what actually they will have at the end of their work uh, working lifetime as a as a pension um, or or in the different public services you know things that do matter for people at the end of the day did made this huge result for the left uh, and the coalition called NUPS. All right. So, yeah, the, the, the new popular union, as that coalition uh, is called, um, it's interesting when you break down the numbers, Annabelle Lever, uh, the, uh, the left, uh, is it the fact that uh, this is, as I said at the outset, kind of like a midterm election for, uh, for an incumbent who's no longer the new kid on the block? Or is it the mm. fact that the left managed this time to be united? And by the way... But they didn't get any more votes, I gather, than they had individually before. So it's not... They lost. I mean, it's a bit disappointing. It's not as though they managed to mobilise people to come out for them. I'd expected, actually, that it would be much more dramatic and exciting. But I guess not everyone's obsessed with politics in the way that we are. But it was really weird. So apparently their mm. actual votes aren't any higher. On how the you, other hand... How do you explain that? Can I just say something? I thought the thing with Marine Le Pen is she's... She has to go again because there weren't, the turnout wasn't so high. So she may have got yeah, she 40%. Got more than, she, in her, in her she district, got 54. she got she more got than half the vote. Yeah, but, but, but the she, turnout was too low. But the, but the rules are you need to have a, a, a certain percentage of the yeah. electorate show up on the day. So yeah, she's so going to go couldn't even round, manage that. Which she'll win handily, uh, I suppose, yeah. ne next Sunday. Um, the, uh, l let's talk about those some of those key races where yeah. and there's something like 14 or 15 cabinet members uh, who are running in this election, including the prime minister. Um, there is that race in the eastern suburbs of Paris, a constituency where the outgoing member of parliament uh, was from Emmanuel Macron's party. Mm -hmm. uh, the former, she's not a current minister, sports minister, Roxana Maasinanou, she's trailing Rachel Keke by 13 points. First run for office for both. Rachel Keke, born in Ivory Coast, led a successful strike by hotel cleaning staff. I don't have any words. A new chapter is beginning in France. A cleaning lady, or anyone, can now be a part of the National Assembly. We can clearly hope in a victory. I thank all the voters that trusted me. Uh, is this kind of story uh, a tale of what's, what we're, we're, the matchups we're going to see, Lex Paulson, or is this story an outlier? I think it's, it's actually very um, uh, exemplary in that you see a candidate who knows how to organize Mm. winning in a low turnout election. And this is the thing. I, I disagree with the analysis that um, that Sophie ju just just gave, that, that low turnout is good for Macron, because low turnout produces surprises. And Macron doesn't want to surprise surprises uh, next Sunday. He wants predictable, reliable results, especially for his dozen or so ministers, including several running in circumscription in Paris, who did not get uh, the first place uh, in the first round, who will be out of government. And I know I know a couple of them. They don't have a plan B, right, for if they don't win the, the, the second round of the election. So uh, I think uh, show that this, this, this woman uh, in, the, in, the, in the Val de Marne, she uh, very impressively put her skills as an organizer to work going to convince voters. And it shows that in a low turnout election, when you give voters a reason face to face to vote, that can make all the difference. So I think the candidates who are going to do well will be following her example. All right. If all those who stayed home uh, had a political party, well, <laughs> 
they'd have already won by a landslide. We wouldn't be here <laughs> talking about the second round. Uh, this is uh, what the results from the first round lo would look like. And again, if you the, the numbers. So instead, it's the far left uh, coalition there. Uh, the left wing coalition would be on 12 percent. Uh, the uh, Emmanuel Macron's party in purple there would be on 12% uh, uh, as well, and the far right would be uh, on uh, a little uh, under 9%. That's, uh, again, we've been talking about it, how uh, voter apathy, which, by the way, is not a new ailment, uh, but a steadily worsening chronic condition if you look at French politics uh, uh, over the years. Uh, some say that uh, it's gotten sizably worse since they reduced the, reduced the mandate of the president, Annabelle Lever, from seven uh, to five years. Is this a French problem or a European problem? Well, I think everyone has a problem, but what I can't get over, I, I just am gobsmacked. The idea that in Saint-Denis, parts of Saint-Denis and parts of Marseille, only Working less than 10 percent voted. Yeah. Less than 10 percent. I mean, I've never heard of anything like this. I mean, maybe parts of Eastern Europe. But this isn't. This doesn't seem to me a normal level of abstention. It's not, you know, sort of a secular increase when barely part of your population votes in a democracy. Sophie Rouser, these are areas that uh, where turnout uh, for Jean-Luc Mélenchon was high during the presidential election first round. Uh, why are people in those working class districts not voting in legislative elections? It's a hard question. If there was a magic bullet to solve this issue, um, we would have done it by, by far um, right now. But it's what to convey a bit, what's, uh, to react a bit to what the previous speakers were saying. I think there is something very French to a democratic crisis that also happens in other European countries and across the globe. But I was saying, I don't know if you, you might remember last time I came, I was explaining that one of the very problem of the political system in France is this, you know, Republican monarchy that we have. So we yeah. have, we convey huge powers to the president. And then, of course, people sort of understand that the National Assembly doesn't really play a role. What we have achieved here with the left coalition of noobs is to bring back people to the to the poll, polling stations uh, to vote to have something to to care about because the macron was very silent about his own political program we said if you have macron you will have the retirement age at 65 we want to have it at the age of 60. So those are kind of like concrete example we were giving on on the ground to mobilize people again and to understand that that it is not constitution, constitutional uh, that, the, that the president have so much power. We are going way above the constitutional power. This is why also we have pledged, pledged for um, Jean-Luc Mélenchon uh, being prime minister, because constitutionally the president does propose a name to the National Assembly, but the National Assembly can vote him down. So depending on the majority that we will get on next Sunday, we can actually have Jean-Luc Mélenchon becoming a prime minister. Why didn't he uh, run for re-election in his district? I think it, you know, in full transparency, there is a time where you need to sort of fall back and leave room for the next generation. This is what we have done in the last five years. Mathilde Panot is now the chairman of the, of the, of the group, of the parliamentary group, hopefully maybe of the next one. Uh, Adrien Quatennens is the one leading the France Insoumise movement. Manuel Bompard was the one heading the campaign. There is room for a um, younger, uh, younger Insoumise generation. So he wants to step aside and become prime minister, is that it? Yeah, prime minister is a, is quite a good and challenging goal, I think. And then, <laughs> but not really not, stepping aside. <laughs> even in the case that we lose, he will not vanish. Sorry, but not really stepping aside, said Lex. Uh, Patricia <laughs> Chagnon, uh, let me let me ask you, uh, how do you see a, a, a reform to to redress those imbalances uh, as described by the panel between the executive branch, which is too powerful, and uh, parliament, which doesn't have enough power? Um, I think that the low turnout, um, as uh, the other speakers were saying, which is which is a trend that's been um, uh, aggravating itself in France, 
um, is something we really need to address. And actually, Macron had said he was going to address the problem when he got elected in 2017, but subsequently apparently forgot about it. Um, that it's very important to realize in France, with our two-tier electoral system, um, and I can just cite the example of, of my own party, the Rassemblement National of Marine Le Pen, that in 2017, in the second round, uh, Marine Le Pen had 32 uh, percent. I just mentioned for the auditors that this time we did nine points better. She did nine points better than in the presidential elections in 2017. Um, but we only had seven, subsequently, seven members of parliament out of the uh, 577. So you can see the imbalance. So 32 percent of the population who voted Marine Le Pen were subsequently represented by seven members in the French parliament who didn't even have a group. So that makes people very dissatisfied. Now, this is only a recent example, but I can give you the example of the referendum in 2005 for the um, European Constitution, where the French voted against, and subsequently, with a bit of artistic politics, um, it was pushed through anyway uh, some time later. Um, French people have the feeling that when they are voting, um, uh, they are not being heard. And this is quite true. I mean, the left has totally abandoned uh, the, the, the working class electorate in France. They they have massively come to the Rassemblement National and uh, the, 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 the noobs, which is sort of rejoicing in their in their pr pretended victory or making everyone believe that there is a huge victory this time around. Um, I would like to remind you that if you add the scores of the four parties that composed noobs in, in, in that composed noobs already in 2017, noobs has actually lost um, uh, adhesion uh, when you when you compare it. And I think the exact number, if, if my calculation is right, is somewhat over one one percent. Mr. Macron lost eight percent since 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 2017 in in the legislative elections, and the only party that has known growth is the Rassemblement National. Uh, sorry, Macron lost six percent in the since 2017, and we, and Marine Le Pen, the Rassemblement National, has an increase of eight percent. So there is a dynamic in France of the electorate to be heard, uh, to have uh, constitutional reforms, to have electoral reforms because we believe very much that we need to have more proportional election um, and uh, the dynamics is definitely on our side. So I think that unless we reform the electoral system in France, unless there is truly participation and that the electoral, all, rep all French people can be properly represented in the, in the parliament, um, sadly, very sadly, uh, this abstention will probably continue. Sophie Rouser, you agree? Yeah, I sort of agree. I mean, nobody's pride about uh, the, 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 the abstention level in France. The difference between Macron and the Noobs coalition is that we actually have proposals. He's just saying that, like for the Convention uh, on Ecology, that he will convene, you know, a huge uh, gathering of citizens and, and have the mes message uh, uh, passed into legisl legislation. Well, this is, you know, what he already promised last time, and he did nothing. So there's a huge set of possible measures measures from the less radical one to the most radical one that could actually make a lot of good to the demo democracy of, of, of our regime. Uh, for instance, we could start by moving the legislative elections away from the presidential election. We could also hear uh, the message of the Yellow Vest movement that we're asking for a RIC, for a, you know, a citizen uh, referendum. Um, referendum. Um, uh, uh, citizens, so the fact that the it citizens could trigger a referendum. Uh, and in our program, this is actually the first chapter that we have is about the democratic urgency. So we have already like a lot of pages and to recommend different tools to make the best possible use of citizens' involvement on a daily basis in our democracy. Now, We've spelled that. Can I react to that? Just very quickly, Patricia Chagnon. Yeah, just, just very quickly. You know, what's been really confusing is that I listen to Ms. Rosa and uh, um, I, I, tend to, I tend to agree with her. And the, but the confusion for the French electorate today is that for the presidential election, uh, these same left-wing parties asked to vote for Macron, and today they're fighting Macron. So the French people just don't understand. I think these pol politicians are just making agreements to get their positions elected, but are not there to represent their interests. So I think there is great confusion 
election um, because political parties are not assuming their political stance. And that also very much needs to be clarified. How can you, a couple of weeks ago, ask to vote for Mr. Macron, while today you are campaigning for your candidates for nukes against Mr. Macron? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it makes and perfect I think sense. Yes, it makes sense. Yeah. Maybe the nuance. No, maybe uh, the nuance uh, is too is too fine, but we never said that we called for okay. voting for Macron. I, I, I think, we said I that think not a single a vote I must go to a, Marine Le Pen, which is which is very different. I think we're making a fundamental mistake about confusing elections for democracy. Now imagine the six of us were governing the country and we had to take on the most complex issues of the day, but we could only say three words to each other a year. How effective would we be in governing France? Now, that's what the electoral yeah. system asks of French people, is that we are going to present you a choice of, in the case of the second round of the presidential election, two people. You get to send one bit of information. That's not democracy. I, that's I, not, that's that's not self-government. No, we, I, think we, I think we agree. No, but, but, but making that legislature more proportional is, is only one step. Yeah. I totally agree with you. It, it was a crime that after that much level of support, that only seven people from the Rassemblement, and I'm not against, uh, I'm not for uh, Marine Le Pen, but I totally take the point. And I think that what the French uh, 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 people who do the assesseur, they do a wonderful job. The election system is great. It's easy. It's effective. It's fair. It's accurate. It's not corrupt. These are all great things. It's quick. But to say that elections equal democracy is a fundamental category mistake. The French people are not apathetic about democracy. They are involved in their communities. They are hungry to participate. But if we limit democracy to just elections, we are missing an opportunity. And what Macron has done with this idea for the Conseil de Refondation, uh, our friends at NUPES might think, as they do with everything with Macron, that, it's that he's, he has terrible intentions, he's a hypocrite, he'll never... But if you assume bad intentions, then you can't make this experiment a success. The Commencement Citoyen, you might say he did nothing. He passed a, a, a climate These law. are sort of town hall style meetings that uh, yes, happened. But that, honestly, was, that was, that I, was I, the I, Grand Debat, and then honestly, we had the Commencement Citoyen. Citoyen. And I will say this, you might think it was nothing, it was hypocritical, it was a totally uh, uh, you know, whitewashing exercise. It puts France at the, at the vanguard of democratic countries in the world right now who are oh, trying to on. tinker with their elect electoral system. I'm telling you as an American who've worked I in politics to, yeah, in, in, in 20 countries, okay? So, so yeah. if you limit your analysis of French democracy to the electoral system, it's you who are making a fundamental mistake about the possibilities of democracy in this country. No, I, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot have, I cannot just not comment on this because I'm, I'm a French citizen, I live in France, I'm elected in France. Uh, the, the, the grand débat that Mr. Macron organized after the yellow vests was just a total hoax. It was organized by mayors who were members of his new party. The invitations were made only to Macron-compatible mayors. They sat there for hours listening. I had mayors who are friends here from rural France because member, many mayors in rural France don't have an official a political, a political tag. They are independent uh, mayors. And they had to sit through hours of these conferences. There was absolutely nothing democratic about it. It was a monologue that went on for hours. It's with completely Mr. wrong. Macron factually lecturing, factually incorrect. Lecturing factually incorrect. No, Six I think regional Macron assemblies were tirés au sort, and they were Macron, done by a sorry, a sampling just, of all the, of all the finish, population. If I could just finish my sentence, if I could just finish my sentence, Mr. Macron needs to uh, organize proper elections. We need to have proportional elections, and political parties need to stop uh, rallying with each other, being friends on one election, enemies on the next election. French people don't understand it. The political system system needs to be clarified, and uh, the, 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 the traditional parties and noobs, uh, like the Republicans, I mean, need to clarify their position. We have Republicans today in Macron's, in Macron's government. The Republican voters don't understand that. They stay away. You think so in terms of categories of political yeah. parties, the French people want solutions. They don't care about what ticket is a minister in a party or what a party, uh, where they stand in a specific circumscription. They want to see solutions. So you guys are thinking in very uh, old categories, and the, Fr the French people deserve better than that in the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, well, I was a cystic. Mm. I we, we know what those conferences are, and we just had the conference so for why the future don't you try of Europe and in Brussels. Have a bit more well, well, what's, your, what's your democracy and agenda then? What's your democracy it's, agenda? Just doubling down on the electoral system and watching the participation go down like this for another five years? That's what that's what you want to see? 
It's, 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 it's doubling down on a failed system, whereas the French people want to participate in a range no, of ways. Your, and there's no favor. democracy agenda in, in Marine Le Pen's, I've read the whole, the whole proposal, there's no democracy agenda beyond what you've said, which is oh. doubling down on elections. This is not excuse the best me. way to fixing excuse democracy. Me. And I'm excuse French me. as well, and I vote in no, France. No, you should read my translation. You'll That'd be much be better off. Oh, the French, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's really polite. Um, yeah. The program of Marine <laughs> Le Pen calls for proportional, uh, proportional elections. The program of Marine Didn't Le Pen... Didn't say one word about participatory or deliberative democracy. Obviously, not one word. The, excuse me, it'd be nice if I don't interrupt you when you're talking. It'd be very nice well, if you It'd be very nice if somebody else could see. get a word in too, actually. I've been yes, trying. Just I've, let me just correct. Correct. It's a give and take. That's correct. what the program is. Let me just correct the fact that Marine Le Pen proposes proportional elections and proposes the referendum on uh, of, of, of uh, public initiative. Direct so democracy helps dictators. <laughs> yeah, that's a very big democratic change. Annabelle, I, Annabelle Lever. Can I just say one of the things that really strikes me is that at the moment everyone talks about tirage au sort as the alternative. But when you look at one of the experiments that seems to have really, really interested... Tirage au sort, translate that for oh, our viewers. Sorry, what you, um, lottery, lottery, lottery system. Lotteries, sort of yeah. lottery system. Random, yes, Random okay. selection of citizens. You look at the petite république de science, that experience of trying to do direct democracy at a local level. And I personally think that seeing much more support for that would be far more helpful than a lot of these very engineered exercises. Ah, but France is a top-down country. Well, it isn't always. Apparently, there are like 40 experiments since the science case um, where mm. places are trying to do it. So my feeling is that really, we also know that mayors are the most popular of the elected um, posts. That actually trying to start with much more direct democracy at local it's level. It's not about be the best party names and party ideology. That's it's right. about pragmatism and, and about news, issues that people know about. That's exactly let, let, right. let, let, let's let's talk about what what's what is the conversation over what's gonna be again a sprint because you had the the, yeah. the marathon of the seven weeks but after the presidential election sometimes felt like the doldrums that oh, campaign God. now it's a sprint hmm. uh, and as as you heard uh, participants like Sophie Rouser say at the outset to mobilize people who didn't vote in the first round to get them out point one and we talked about it was the abstention rate the record abstention rate in the first round and the other is how French politics looks and when you break down the number of votes and what the snapshot of the next National Assembly uh, will uh, look like. Is France turning more to the left, more to the right, more to a grand centrist uh, coalition? Three blocks emerging from the presidential election. And when France's prime minister addressed the nation Sunday night, Elisabeth Bonn called on voters to, as she put it, reject the extremes. She did not distinguish between far right and the often Eurosceptic hard left of uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the message even more explicit from her European affairs minister, Clément Beaune himself, in a tight runoff in Paris against a Green candidate aligned uh, with uh, the uh, uh, Mélenchon-led uh, left coalition. We will denounce what is extremism. I've always been clear in my positions regarding the far right, but today it's indeed a left-wing extremism, different but dangerous, that we're taking on here. I'm convinced that faced with the great decision, the great duel, here, like in many parts of France, electors will opt for this Republican and European choice. Lex Paulson, is Jean-Luc Mélenchon an extremist? The problem is, is that he has an ideology that is out of date. Uh, I would much rather see someone like Sophie uh, as prime minister than someone like Jean-Luc Mélenchon. Why? Because he has the reflexes of a cold warrior. Someone for whom, if you were affiliated with a left-wing dictatorship like Hugo Chavez or indeed Vladimir Putin, you probably had some seed of the truth. Whereas if you were criticizing America or criticizing Brussels, you were probably going to be evil. And this is, this is still the reflect. We've seen 25 years since Jean-Luc Mélenchon was an actual member of a government, 25 years of making speeches that um, does not show a real capacity to govern. So it's, it's not so much my, my problem with the, the Mélenchon coalition right now, as it's composed, is not its, its stances on a majority of issues, which are climate change, pushing Macron to the left on climate, I think that's a good thing. Pushing Macron maybe further to the left on social issues. If there can be a, a debate, a, a productive, constructive, legislative debate, I think that's a positive thing. But saying that America bad, Russia, Venezuela good, uh, you know, Europe, uh, we want less of NATO, even though NATO is the one now standing up for Europe uh, in, in, in the war in Ukraine. I think these are positions from the 
60s, 70s, 80s, and I think a younger generation of Greens, France Insoumise, socialists, that's what we need to take. And the problem is, is that Mélenchon and Marine Le Pen don't know how to get out of the way. I think a younger generation could be more pragmatic, less ideological, and let's finally put the Cold War behind us. Sophie Rauser. Yeah, honestly, I'm very, very tired because from what I hear here is that like, the aggressivity is only on one side and we are the only one accused of being, you know, radical, far left, aggressive, violent people. But what I hear here, the violence is only on one side. I mean, I've personally never heard Jean-Luc Mélenchon supporting any dictatorship. Uh, what he's saying basically is that for Europe and for France, that there is a middle way that is not supporting Russia nor the Americans, but find its own path. Uh, especially Has the war in when Ukraine changed the, the equation? War in Ukraine. I didn't. I didn't cut your 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 sentence. So just don't do this with me neither. Um, so yes, and on on Europe in, in Europe in affairs, we can see that the neighbors, for example, in Germany, are also increasing their wage. What is their minimum wage? What is so radical about this? You know, there, there's been a massive increase in Germany. Nobody is accusing them of being a far radical terrorist. Same things. You know, you're speaking about energy and how good Macron is on energy. What he has done at European level while being the president of the EU is as he's been going to Hungary, bargaining with Orban to get the nuclear and the gas back in the taxonomy that is supposed to label what is a green investment. I mean, and this is very factual. I'm not, you know, stating facts that, that you know, just pointing the finger and saying adjectives that are, that are supposed to frighten people. I'm just taking facts. If you look at the NUPS common program, you will see that whatever you're pointing the finger at doesn't exist. Annabelle Lever, you, your thoughts on, on mm -hmm. is France be, want reform or revolution at this time? Well, I don't think if they wanted revolution, they'd be out in the streets and maybe they might even be voting more <laughs> radically. Um, so I, I don't think they I don't think they know what they want. I mean, that's my feeling. And at the moment, we don't have any very good expression of some sort of collective identity or even much of anything. Really? Because we, come on, we've just come out of COVID. We've uh, had, uh, right now we're in the throes of yeah. uh, the worst inflation in decades. Uh, mm. There's the, as we were mentioning it, the war in Ukraine. You're saying there is no feeling of collective belonging right now in France? I don't think so. I mean, otherwise, however annoyed you are with the parties, I mean, you did have a lot of choice in this in the legislative elections. I mean, there are lots and lots and lots of parties. The idea that none of them, none of them appeal to you, none of them make you want to go out and vote. I mean, it, to me, it seems very sad, but it also suggests actually the people are sitting and, to me, it seems like they're sitting and waiting. I think you said something really interesting, though, Annabelle, uh, before, which is that at the local level, I think that collective identity and solidarity is very strong. Mm -hmm. And I, I see it I see it in my neighborhood yeah. in Paris. I've seen it. I've seen it around the country. We need to stop equating how people feel about political parties with how they feel about democracy. Now, I know we all care at this at this table a lot about political parties. I've worked for one several. Everyone around here is, has, has supported them, but they're not the essence of democracy. The essence of democracy are citizens taking part in their government. That is the essence of democracy. And if we limit that only to the electoral process, we have a very, very pessimistic and, and, and small vision of what a collective intelligence in France could produce. I think once more, there is a lot of, of passion and intelligence and engagement at the, at the local level. Yeah. Will some of the candidates who you mm -hmm. mentioned in, 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 in this mm -hmm. hour, will they be able to tap into that and say what you are doing and what you care about locally matters in this election no, next because Sunday? it means they have to give up some you power. Know. That's that, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's, that's right. right. The assembly needs to have, power. I think, honestly, and the president need to have less power, mayors, regions, provinces, they need to much that's more. Need to have, because that's where pragmatism, that's where problem yeah. solving happens, not in, right. in the windy speeches in, in, the, in the Hemicycle in, in Paris. Um, Patricia Chagnon. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really think that um, uh, Annabel uh, Lever, Mrs. Lever, uh, the the problem is really the uh, what happens after the elections. As I pointed out before, French people 
don't feel that their voices are correctly being correctly heard. They don't feel that people that their that their politicians are listening to them. Most politicians are not listening to them. So I think the real big problem is there. Politicians need to be clear in their messages and not confound the message in one election, support one candidate and another candidate. I would also like to reassure Mr. Paulson, uh, who said that Marine Le Pen wasn't leaving her place. I might point out to him that we have the youngest president of the Rassemblement National of any political party, I think, today. He's 28 years old. He is, he is, he is our party leader at the moment and will most probably be elected. And yes, we are very strong amongst, young, uh, amongst the younger generations because, yes, we truly believe, and, and I agree with you on that, that uh, the younger generations are, are the future of France and must get involved in, in politics. Just one comment about democracy and politics, as we've discussed. Um, I, assisted of the, at, at the, oh, I assisted at the period here in France of the Grand Débat, the big debate with, which, I, which I talked about before. But I also assisted recently in, 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 in Brussels at the Conference for the Future of Europe, which was, again, mm. an exercise in, 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 in consultation. Now, I am disturbed about one thing in, 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 in these consultations, is the, 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 the methods for selecting the panels. Kantar, who did that for, 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 for in Brussels, never, never communicated on how they selected them. There were no, um, uh, there were no conflicts of interest that were, that were proclaimed. So it's very vague. I think if you look at the French Electoral Code, which is behind me somewhere in my, in, in, in my, in my library, it is very thick. And it's very thick because it guarantees transparency, etc. So I think it's it's. Although I very much believe in in consultation, um, I also believe that we have a, a system of representative democracy that we elect uh, our, our mayors, our, our, our councillors, our regional councillors, our, our departmental councillors, our members. We delegate. Um, our vote to them, our voice to them for their mandate. And how's and that going? Yes, we call them back if we don't agree. So I think we need to reinforce the clarity. And yes, we do need to have uh, consultations, but consultations need to be consultations. We need to respect. What if French people? Uh, the, 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 the sacred, the sacred, the um, sacred. Uh, no, there's election. nothing sacred in politics. There's just what works. And frankly, we see the representative system is not working. If we abandon this idea that. The, the the system of the past is on the French is on its fifth republic. Okay, let's not let's not kid ourselves. The French know listen, the French know listen, how to listen. experiment with politics. I, I love you describing so the let's country do, where I've been elected for a long time. It's pretty funny. That's I'm great. Sure you I have an opinion as well as you. I'm a French Paris. citizen as well. I vote as well, and I'm active in French politics. So my opinion counts. Your opinion counts. It's totally fine. Now oh, the French you, the French I you were especially active in foreign oh, in foreign. This is, this is very good I, because I, Marie Le Pen again has a different opinion about people who were born in a different country. They're maybe not quite as French as the rest of us. But let me let me go on. What the French Excuse say about me, experimentation. I, I can't what say the, that what I the French wanted, say about experimentation actually, is very born, important. No, no, right? no, no, no. We can I'm we can try a different kind I'm of system Dutch. beyond the representative system. I the representative system is the one that I we is the one Dutch. that we have, but it's not the last system the French yes. will have. If the French want no, to gracious. make a bet on the collective no, intelligence of their citizens, the French it's will gracious. do it. So right. the French have the ability to to make a new system if they want to. Let me bring in some. First of all, no, I must correct. I'm not born French at all. I am actually, I was born Dutch with an American stepfather. Uh, so no, uh, Marine Le Pen believes that everyone who is French is French and everyone who loves France is very welcome to oh, well, France. I accept so your that's apology that's why they, I accept that's your apology. That's why they campaign in Saint-Denis. <laughs> that's why they campaign in Saint-Denis. Uh, well, sure one, one final question, because we're running short on time. Sophie Rouser, uh, one of the keys for next Sunday, as you said at the outset, is mobilizing more voters. How do you get young people to vote? Well, it's a good question. Um, first, in the pr we've good, we've got good basis to start with on this question because on the on the presidential election we were the first uh, most voted political party amongst the youngest generation. I think there's a number of core issues. Um, such as climate change that will make a difference uh, in this election and on this matters with only 17 members at the National uh, Assembly in the last legislature we have tabled 
quite a lot, probably more than an average uh, members of Macron people on this specific matter. So that's one of the keys to the success. But also by having a lot of very, very young candidates. We have the youngest candidate running in France. Um, so, and in multiple areas, including uh, facing members of the cabinet of Macron. So, I mean, no magical solution. Again, I'll not say the young think that, or the French will think this. I'll see what comes out of the scrutiny. And meanwhile, we'll continue to be on the ground, meeting every French citizen that we can, even here in the Benelux, which is one constituency as well. That's right, the French vote uh, abroad in 11 uh, constituencies there. Mm -hmm. uh, Annabelle Lever, we're out of time. Just what, what is the key heading into next Sunday? You have to be out on the streets talking to people and That's get it. them in. There's no other solution. There's no magic solution. All right, we'll leave it there. I want to thank you, Annabelle Lever. I want to thank as well uh, Sophie Rouser and Patricia Chagnon in Brussels. Lex Paulson, thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate. And of course, much more coverage of the French elections on our website, France24.com. <laughs>